we're going to talk about the derivation of the power rule for uh, taking derivatives, but first I have to mention something about uh, Pascal's triangle, which is this, and expanding binomials. All right. it turns out that these numbers are the coefficients um, in a binomial e expansion. And what that means is if you take x plus y to the zero power, what you get is just one. If you take x plus y to the first power, what you get is uh, 1x plus 1y, right? If you take x plus y quantity squared, what you get is x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. So notice what your, these, the 1, 2, 1, the 1, 2, 1, these numbers are the coefficients in, in, a, in a binomial expansion. And we're going to need this when we, when we go to take a derivative uh, when we go to uh, show that the power rule works um, for derivatives. So it, just to do one more example, if we said, say, x plus y uh, quantity cubed from this row, the expansion would be x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus uh, y cubed, right? The powers of x go down and the powers of y go up. So we're going to need this in a couple seconds. Um, right, to do the actual rule, the derivative with respect to x of x to the n, that means take the limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h to the n minus x to the n over h. If we use the h definition, this is how it works out. Now, if we can evaluate this limit, that's going to give us the result of the power rule. So what we ought to do is use the binomial expansion uh, from Pascal's triangle to write out what this expansion would be. So let's see, if I come down here, it'll be the limit as h approaches 0. Now it's x plus h to the n power. If I get my notes here for a second. The first term in that expansion is going to be, since since uh, if you bring it up to, if you say square it, the highest power present is going to be the, the squared. And if you cube everything, the highest power that you're going to see is cubed. And it's going to be that first term cubed, or that first term squared. So this is going to be the limit as x to the n, right, because we're taking it to the nth power, plus. Now, what's that second one going to be? Well, if we come back here to the triangle, it appears that whatever the exponent is, that's going to be the second coefficient, right? x, x plus y cubed, second coefficient is 3, fourth is 4, and so on. So the second term that's going to appear here is going to be n. And then since the powers of x go down, it's going to have x, it's going to be x to the n minus 1, and this will be our first h term. So it'll be uh, h plus. Now, what appears, all right, when, when we finish writing out this expansion, all that we really need to understand is that every term past this one is going to have more than one h in it. All right? So the third coefficient is going to be some number. I don't really know what it is. It's not that important. But it's going to be x to the n minus 2 h squared plus and so on and so on until the final term will be h to the n. All right, so that's what we get from multiplying this out. If you expand that out, you'll get this big entire thing. And on the end, we have minus x to the n. And all that is over h. So, uh, usually when we get to this point in the d demonstration, things start canceling out. And that's exactly what happens here. The x to the n's, they go, all right? And then once they cancel, everything left has at least one h in it. So, what we'll do is we'll perform that cancellation, and then one h will go in this term, and then one h will go from this term. 
and so on and so on for every other term in, in, inside here and so on for that one. So the new thing that we get after taking out all these unnecessary terms is limit as h approaches zero. So what's left? You'll have this first term n x to the n minus one plus and then there's still this other term here that's got some number out in front times x to the n minus two and now it's only going to have one h in it because because um, one of the h's is canceled from all of these and then there's going to be a whole lot of other terms, each of which has at least one h. So this is it. This is where we're at. And it is at this point we can take the limit as h approaches zero. Every one of these terms that had an h in it, including everything in here, all um, up to and include up to this one, they all become zeros. And what you're left with is n x to the n minus one which was what we had set out to differentiate.